Hi everyone, I'm here with Get Right. I think everyone uh, recognizes him. Uh, let's ask you a few questions before uh, before talking about the event. Uh, let's talk about Pete. He's your fifth player since January now. It's been seven months. Uh, how how is it going for for you and the team? Um, it was kind of a long shot for us to take him in since no one of us really knew him back uh, before we took him in, and. Uh, it was a long shot, and we didn't know how we would act and everything, but we put up simple rules in the beginning. We have to start off from scratch. We don't have any defined roles anymore. We have a new coach, uh, we have a new player, and we want him to be feeling like perfectly in the team, so he will pick whatever he's used to and what he wants to play instead of maybe he wants to play on my position or something like that. He, he's, his word is his you know, demand or what to say. Uh, but after a while, we saw that he has potential to become even better. I don't think he, uh, he's, he's still not at his highest level, but that's the beauty of a new guy, uh, so to say, because um, he's a rough diamond, you know. If you just help him a little bit on the, on, the, on the road, he will become even better. And you can see it like every tournament that he plays, he become better and better. Uh, and you see that he fits perfectly in the team. We have the same humor. We have everything is really relaxing. And uh, it's pretty cool to see he's 22 and the rest of us is like 25 plus, like year age. And you can see always there's a difference between age in general. But he takes it up his pace and he also gives Freiburg a little bit of shit, you know, back in the scene, just like joking and so on, you know. So he, he, he fits perfectly into the team now. And um, we just try to work every day with each other and with him especially to become even better. Because we had this picture of the the first NIPs, the first CSGO NIPs, you know, with uh, Fifth Lauren. And we always saw you like uh, a group of friends, five friends. So on the on the human on the human side, Fifth is just uh, just as good. Yeah, <laughs> like it's uh, there isn't much change like every person we had in the team like Michael and Alu and especially Piff now is they're funny people and they're they fit perfectly and they they don't look strange on us with our sense of humor because you have to remember it's almost four years now it's on 10th of August we celebrate us four years together as a team uh, us four and uh, so it's it's a hard group of people to you know come in as a lone player but I think it was perfectly time when we put in a new coach and a new player that makes in a way two players that's adding to the team and especially since Fred is an in-game leader and it takes a bigger impact of the team than may people may not know you know so it's like a perfect thing and <coughs> he just fits perfectly into the team and he takes up you know a lot of space you know when we talk to him and so on he looks like a shy guy but when when you get to know him really well you know that he's he's a calm down-to-earth guy he so a focus guy. Yeah, exactly. And uh, he makes his weird jokes. <laughs> but <laughs> everyone is weird in their own way. You know, no one is in esports in general are you know normal in a way. So it's 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 a perfect mix, if you ask me. Of course, can't argue with that. <laughs> Speaking about coach, uh, you have a new coach. You just uh, told that Fritz. I, I'm pronouncing right, Fred. 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 Sorry, my English is no, kind of bad. Uh, and surprise, you had to play with him uh, on a tournament. It was kind of a surprise for everyone, uh, especially you, uh, I guess. And it go well. Uh, you you did a good uh, a good result with a player which a g which is a good player. Is a good player, but it's not normally a. Uh, one uh, one of the team is here to coach, not yeah. to play. And uh, how did you manage to do that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's it's a long story, and I should cut it down a little bit. We had pretty much two to three days maximum practice days with him because we were very tilted about the whole situation that happened with Piff, the visa problem. Tried to work, it didn't work. We tried another way. You know, it was like a a week of a lot of things that we tried to fix and get him into the country, get his visa and everything, but nothing worked. And it was a holiday in Sweden, so the embassy is not open. And it was a lot of problems that came up with it. So we, were, we weren't actually, we were prepared like for the tournament, how much hours, how much we put into it, because this was the tournament that we wanted to show off that we are good, you know? And we showed that in Malmö. We won the tournament in Malmö directly after when Pip was in the team. Uh, 
So during that week, we had two days only with Fred. Uh, less than 15 games in total, like 12, 10, I don't know. And we felt that we were lacking a bit, like, you know, because he hadn't played professionally in so many years. And uh, we know that he has experience. He has been playing on the big stage. He's uh, been a former teammate of me, Forrest, and Exist. He knows us very well. And um, he's a calm guy, you know. He's not going to do anything stupidly because he's nervous or anything like that. He's a stable guy. He doesn't shine. He doesn't do anything special or something. But he puts in what's you know needed for him you know so we weren't really scared but in the same time there was like a mix of emotion like will this even work we will fail the group stage uh, can piff come you know it was like everyone's mind was like everywhere else instead of just putting in the hours that was needed for him to jump in and i mean our only goal for that tournament was to qualify for the players to become legends again because Legends that start us in, in the majors are so important and uh, with so many tournaments on a run like at the same time It's hard to be focusing on everything So like for example if you need to qualify for a major it takes a lot of time for it and preparation and so on So we were just super happy with it And especially since everyone was talking about mouth sports then and we had them in the group We had LG and Flipside and we have Flipside here again yeah. And they're they're not a bad team they, they never have or will or anything like that. They're a strong team and people underestimate them so much. Oh, we have Malsports, the upper rising team. They play well in Katowice just recently. Nico was on fire, you know, like, and we have LG, you know, like, they became the champions of the tournament. And you, you know, they're just the brink of, you know, winning a tournament. Uh, so, I mean, it was a tough group for us, especially with Fred as a player. And he's used to coaching the whole time. But we managed to make it in the end and we were just super happy with it and we just took like one game at a time and see what happens and then we got drawn up with Navi in the first round of the playoffs. We were like, <laughs> let's do something crazy and pick Inferno or something like that. I think we picked Inferno or something, you know, like to make it feel them uncomfortable with it and like knowing that we would probably pick something else more aim heavily because we're a mix in a way, you know, but uh, like those two, uh, yeah, exactly. And I mean, we're happy with the result. We, we're going to look back on it with pride because of all the problems that happened for us before that and knowing we were forced to play with our manager, we couldn't even add a new player or anything. <laughs> it was just a, excuse for language, hell of a ride. You know, it's something that we you will look back to in your career. Even though eighth place at the majors, it doesn't say anything, but it has a story to it, you know, and I never had a story like this. So it's, it's, it's a funny story when you talk about it. Like, Oh yeah, Nip came only eighth uh, two years ago on the major. Yeah, but then you have to remember this and all the problems they had and so on. So it's actually a kind of a happy ending in a way, you know, like it's, they made what their goal was, they made it to the playoffs, they make the legends the next time, they don't need to qualify, and they had these problems before it. So it, it was a good tournament for us. Uh, but I think we would have probably gone further if we had Piff there. So now it's maybe the time. You come here as legend, you, uh, you're in the tournament, and the group stage is already started for you because you had your first game. It was quite a good game for you on those two uh, versus uh, Orbit. I don't remember exactly the score, but it was a huge win for you, 64. And uh, let's go back on that game uh, a little bit. Looks like everything went good for you. Yeah, I mean, it's hard for us, especially since uh, our coach, Fred, he's, he doesn't have a computer, for example, and he is coaching from the computer. All the majors doesn't allow that, for example, anymore, or haven't, you know, they, they never allowed it. Uh, and we're used to having him, you know, like when we practice online and other tournaments and online leagues and everything, he's there, you know, all the time on the spot and playing, and he looks over the money and the nades and everything like that. But we've been practicing this for a time now. Like, for example, Face It League, we had him full time just standing behind us and like concentrated that so he gets used to the feeling, you know. Uh, and also he's, he's a little bit stressed up when, when he's standing behind because he doesn't know everything, you know. Because when he sits on the computer, he sees all the nades, the money and everything and knows how many died of that round, the last round before. How many did they die? How many rounds are we leading with? How much money? You know, it's, it's a clear review for him to understand the game. So the last tournament in this one, we still have a little bit struggle with the communication. It's not a big problem, but it's more like we get stressed up sometimes where it's not even needed to because he missed the information that's needed for him, you know. Uh, but we're working with it every time. And uh, I'm just happy with the game who it went. 
Uh, I think we were cold and they were cold in the game. You know, playing the first game of a major is, is a different thing. People don't understand it. Like, it's, it's a completely different feeling. Is it not like matchmaking? <laughs> no, nah, not really. <laughs> even global matchmaking? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's not even close to that. Yeah. And, but we're used in a way to play big tournaments, you know. Face it was just around the corner. We played the DreamHack before that. We played the, what was it before, the E-League before that. You know, it's like there's so many tournaments in a way. So we, in, in a way we're used to it. But playing on a major, there's like a different pressure that comes up to you. And it's a pressure that people aren't really used to. They say they're used to it, but there's a small little bit, you know, pressure because of the, the legendary status to win a major. You know, it's like there's something you can't take away from a player, you know. Uh, but it's also a nice feeling because I, me personally, I love to be nervous. I love to be feeling the intense and the stressful moment because that shows how much I actually care about the game and the team and everything. And I'm, I'm willing to fight with everything I have for it to win it, you know. Uh, but in the same time, I don't have the same mindset like I did before, like saying, we're going to win, we're going to go to the playoffs, we're going to go to the semis 100%. I just take one game at a time and we go from there. We don't have to overhype ourselves and get disappointed if that happens during the way. We just focus one game at a time and give everything during the game. Okay, so we can maybe just uh, take a second to speak about your next game. Uh, I know you have to... Go go to <laughs> to practice, yeah, and you're not playing today, but uh, you're you're gonna practice uh, all, all week, I guess. Yeah, uh, we we changed it uh, completely. Like every time we got opportunity to practice on tournament, we always take it, no matter what. Uh, I don't feel so many teams does it nowadays. Like when they got opportunity, it's just computer standing there, no one is using them. Uh, but we feel like we wanted to give everything, and if that's needed, that we need to put in more hours during the tournament, it's needed, you know. Uh, but we face Navi tomorrow. Uh, it's, it's a big Navi. game. It's Navi, you know, you never know. Uh, you know that they're gonna give a hell of a fight. And uh, they've been fighting so long to win a major. And uh, it's gonna be a big game. I just hope that both other teams can show up and can show every fans that enjoy CS and have fun with it that it's gonna be a tough game and who wins the game deserves it more than the other one. Okay, thank you. Maybe just uh, one last question, not specially about the tournament or about your team, but we saw, a l ah, I'm not going to say a lot, but a few players uh, having to stop uh, because of injuries, yeah. you know, and uh, you, have a, you had a surgery yourself and you had to stop a uh, short time. Um, do you think... Uh, as a player, how do you do you manage that? Is there is there something like uh, uh, the medicine looking for you, or is because because we see it look like we see more and more injuries. Uh, I'm just happy that I haven't uh, got the in injuries like they had, you know, with arms and the hands and everything. I mean, I have lost a little bit by hearing on one of the ears. I have. Uh, IBS and with my stomach, one day can be good, one day can be bad, you know, it's like very weird. Uh, or I have Crohn's disease, sorry, I said the wrong one. It's two different sickness, there's similarity, but it's different, like a lot. Um, <coughs> I'm really happy to just don't have that because I've been playing CS, what is it, since 99, I was nine years old. And I'm 26 today, and I've been giving like pretty much my whole life to this game. Um, and I, I succeeded to become a pro player. I succeeded to be one of the best players. I succeeded to be in the, one of the best teams and everything. I still strive to become even better than that. And I strive to become like a legendary status that no one can take away from me uh, as a personal player and as a team. Uh, but with all the problems that people have with the injuries and so on, I'm very surprised that I never actually got it, like the problems they had, because I actually had a discussion with Robin yesterday, the face manager, coach, former player of mine, um, or that I play with. Uh, we we're surprised that so many people got this, since me and Robin was one of those players who put in so many hours back in the days. Like we could sit four or five hours on deathmatch before practice and after practice two hours even more. Like so, we played up to 16 hours per day, and uh, we never actually got you know to the point that it hurts. And uh, I don't know if that's the <laughs> the mentality or how we got grown up to the game, like you need to put in and you fight for everything, you know, like 
you put in extra hours if that's necessary and uh, the motivation is super high and you, you're playing against the $2,000 at first price, but you know, people are playing more back then if you ask me than now. And I'm very surprised that I never actually got this problem that they are having, like the injury problem. Uh, but I'm, I'm su super sad about people who got infected by it because this is just part of your life, they see us in the industry of being a professional player. And um, some someday you will quit. And someday you will probably not be in the circus. Someday you probably will be in the circus, but not as a player anymore. And you don't want to end up in your career that you gave everything and you played during you were injured. And this is going to affect you the rest of your life, you know, because... Um, some, some sports players do it. The, they have an injury and they, they have to stop. I know, and think about it, they are going to be living with it the rest of their lives. And it's a serious thing to talk about and a serious thing to have. It's nothing that you look away from. I'm just very happy, sad to, I'm sorry to say it, I'm very happy I never got affected by it, but I'm very sad for people who got affected by it because they need to really take care of it. You don't want to sit there after your career ended or anything like that, that you're you need a job for your hand or anything that's that you love to do, but you can't because it's hurting too much. So people need to be really careful with this and work it and train your body and be ready for anything and, you know, go to therapy if that's needed or, you know, I, I think it's the wrong word, but, you know, like a trainer who helps you, you know. Uh, so I hope that they who have been affected by it, they know how to get it to be fixed again. I hope that they will never get to feel the pain again they have been getting and be normal again, if you can say it like that. And of course, play, play their best, especially in the major. Well, thanks a lot. I'm going to let you practice and practice and practice and practice. <laughs> have a nice day and good luck for the competition. Bye. Bye.